Let's examine the bones that control the torso and body of Mancandy. These bones are in layer 1 of Mancandy's armature. The uh, body bone is apparent of everything in the armature and just moves it all around. So that's a convenient way to move the entire object around within an action. The torso bone is a child of the body and it controls all the bones in the upper body. They all move with it, rotate with it, etc. And then you have the smaller bones in the torso that have a, a more localized effect. The uh, low back bone controls the hip area. Notice it has a cone shape with the point of the cone being at its pivot point and the wide part indicating how it can rotate and it's used to rotate the hips independently of the upper body. Then the mid-back bone controls the rotation of the upper body and notice that the head rotation is independent from its rotation though the head rotation is not independent of the torso rotation. Then you have the top back bone and the neck and the head. Notice that the cross section of the mid backbone has a square shape which is in intended to show that it can be moved as well as rotated to stretch the torso or even squash it a little bit though it has more stretch distance than squash. These bones are all control bones and there are two extra controls available. One allows you to stretch the neck or squash it slightly and the other one allows you to bend the neck slightly. We already went over how the bending of the neck is rigged um, and you can see that if you look at the section about uh, rigging the legs um, where there are several of these bending bones spread out throughout Man Candy's armature and they're all rigged in the same fashion. Now the torso rigging isn't too complicated actually. If you look on this layer here, the third layer from the right in the armature, that layer contains the ge geometry bones that are actually bound, that, that the mesh is actually being deformed by. So if you click on it, you'll notice that there is a chain of bones going up throughout the body mirroring those control bones. There's a, a, a low back geo, a head geo, a neck geo, a mid back geo and a top back geo bone. They're all parented to one another and with the exception of the head they're all multi-segmented to allow for smooth bending. The simplest one is the low back geo, which has no constraints on it at all. It's simply a child of the low back and moves and rotates with it. The mid back geo has a copy scale and a copy rotation constraint on it, pointing to a bone in the last layer of man candy. This bone right here, called mid back stretch. These bones in this last layer are bones that are not bound to the geometry directly and aren't used as controllers. They're simply helper bones that are used for the constraint system. Mid-back stretch is a child of the torso and is constrained via stretch to constraint to top back. So, if I were to move mid-back, like so, you can see it stretches to the top back bone. That stretch and rotation is then copied via the copy rotation and copy scale constraint directly to our mid-back geo bone, which allows for that stretching to happen. Top back geo 
has a copy rotation and copy scale to top back so therefore it does not inherit the change in scale the copy scale is there so it doesn't inherit the change of scale from mid back the stretching happens entirely in this area and doesn't stretch the chest the neck bone or the neck geo bone has a copy rotation to the neck control bone like so but it has a stretch to constraint to neck stretch neck stretch is just a child of neck and is constrained only to move in the y axis and it allows stretching the neck geo bone however it continues to rotate with the rest of the neck which is fortunate the head control bone is different from is different from the rest of the bones in the armature in the in the chain in that it has it is a child of the torso not a child of the bone below it and it has a copy location to neck stretch so stretching the neck moves the head with it and that's why the orientation of the head is independent of the orientation of the bones down the down the chain from it this bone this bone and this bone but is dependent on the rotation of the torso so those are the controls on the geometry bones the main geometry bones for the torso neck and head and you can see that there are further bones with various constraints on them that allow for easier skinning this is just a child bone of this one that allows skinning the uh, ch make, made weight painting the chest a little bit easier um, there are also as you can see here a series of bone in the shoulder areas that are child's children of the upper body and they have stretch to constraints to these little bo bones that are parented to the arms and they somewhat simulate the action of the muscles in the shoulder back and chest via their stretch to constraints and allow smoothing the deformation of the shoulder area of man candy the neck rigging in man candy is a little bit of a legacy setup dating before b bones were invented and has three bones on the top middle and bottom of the neck that are pointing via lock track constraints to these little targets here that are children of this bone that has a stretch to to a target on the head over here and um, the uh, the lock track constraints cause these bones to change orientation but not length so they kind of preserve the volume of the neck and they allow for some twisting they allow for some twisting of the neck as the head twists once again this was done prior to B bones being available in Blender and uh, that's basically how the torso bones are working um, you can see more of these little stretch two helpers here in the hip area where they're helping this portion of the uh, hips uh, deform correctly these two bones pointing forward these leg plane bones are actually legacy bones but they're probably going to get used for a different version for a different reason in the next version of man candy <laughs>